Welcome to a special edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Hope was rising up on the inside of me. Faith was rising up on the inside of me. It was instantaneous, the change in my body. I was healed immediately. He saw my face change. He said the light came back into my eyes and we have not turned around since. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I am playing portions from our Healing Is Here conference in 2019. It was powerful. We saw people raised from the dead. We saw people that, come, you know, couldn't lift a hand, get up and walk. We had people come out of wheelchairs. We had over 1,000 people healed in the very first service And that first service of our 2019 Healing Is Here conference had Daniel Amstutz and Carly Terradez just interacting, sharing back and forth, talking about healing. And at the end, they started praying and the gifts of the Spirit operated. And we saw over a thousand people healed from this exact uh, video that you are going to be watching today. I'm going to play that teaching that Daniel and Carly did. They're fun the way that they interact with each other, but the truth that they put forth is awesome. Watch this, and at the end of today's program, I'm going to come back and share with you how you can receive this teaching. So we've been talking about healing, health, wholeness, and uh, how faith receives. This is a big statement, and, and, and I learned this from Andrew. I just thought it was such a great, concise way to say this. Faith receives what grace has already provided. Faith doesn't move God because God's not stuck. All right? Faith moves us to receive what grace has already provided. Mm -hmm. And because God has already provided salvation, he's already provided this abundant life that we've been talking about, then we need to learn Uh, more about faith in terms of how it works Mm -hmm. and how we can connect with it. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question this morning. How many of you, as you've been believing God for something in your life, have been told, well, brother or sister, it's just that you don't have enough faith. Oh, man. It's a lie. That is so discouraging when you're in the midst of a battle and then have somebody Mm well-meaning, usually, you know, a a family in Christ person Mm -hmm. who says, well, brother, you just don't have enough faith. That's just not, that's not what the word says. It's just, I don't know how else to say it, but if you've believed that, you believed a lie. It's not, it's just not true. Or you know what, Carly, I've heard this one too. Well, you know, Romans 12 says that we all have, and, and the way they usually phrase this is we all have a measure of faith. You just have a really small measure. Actually, we have the measure. The so, measure. What kind of faith are we talking about? Is this like a natural faith where Mm -hmm. I sat on this chair just believing it's going to hold me up? Or is this like more of a supernatural faith? We're not talking about a natural faith that when you turn the light switch on, you know, the light comes on or when you sit on a chair, it's going to hold you up, right? Uh, That's That's not what this is about. That's not faith. That's experience, right? Right. You've sat in the chair before, you've turned a light on before, right? So you know. So you know. We're not even talking about the, the faith that it takes to get born again. Okay, there, there, there is a faith that comes on the inside of you when you receive Jesus, amen? You have like precious faith, it says in the scriptures, it says in First Peter, I think, like precious faith as a son of God, you have the Jesus kind of faith on the inside of you. Do you think that's more than enough faith? Do you think Jesus is ever lacking in the faith department? Do you think if he just, you know, wakes up now and I just don't know if the word is true? I just don't know if I'm really the Messiah. Am I really the son of God? No, if you have the Jesus kind of faith, that is more than enough faith to get the job done. Yeah. You have the measure, the Jesus kind of faith. The Jesus measure of faith is what we have on the inside of us. That, this is the, the dead raising kind. It is. Faith of the dead raising kind. You see, you're already experts in the faith department. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're an expert in the faith department. Yeah, you're an expert. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) You already put your faith in Jesus. Yeah. That was the hardest step of faith you're ever going to take. How many believers do we have in here? Amen. So here's the thing. If you've already taken the hardest step, the rest is going to be a piece of cake. Right. Right? Because you've already, now you have the power of God living on the inside of you, which you didn't have the minute before you received Christ. That changed everything. That changed everything. But the, the, thing, the thing with faith is it, it has an action to it. 
Mm -hmm. It has an action to it. You might have noticed that you didn't just wake up one day and find out that you were saved. Did you, anyone just accidentally fall into salvation? I mean, you just kind of, I don't know, I just this glory cloud hit me or something. I don't know what it was. Woof, wham, saved. Right. No, you had to participate in your salvation. Did you not? Right. Okay. So there was a promise of God. He had a promise for you. He wanted from the, from the very moment of creation, he wanted to have relationship with you. He designed you in his image to be in relationship with him. He wanted you to be his son, his daughter from before you ever even knew him. Yeah. He had a precious promise. In 1 Corinthians, it says, every promise of God is yes and amen. Mm -hmm. God already made his mind up about you and it's good. Yeah. Amen. He's already provided all the promises. Jesus contains all the promises. He fulfilled them all, yeah. right, for you. But we still had to at some point say, Jesus, I want that promise. Yeah. I want that. Yes, we had to put the amen to God's yes. God's promise is a yes, but we have to put the amen to it. We, there, there needs to be some participation. Mm -hmm. And faith is our response to what grace has provided. That's right. It's our positive response that says, yes, I want it. And this is a bit of a, was a revelation to me because I just thought the promises of God came to pass automatically. Right. You know, like just because just a, God said it, it's just going to happen. It's just you're right. going to say it. Like, like salvation, you know? Right. Just because God provided salvation, well, then the whole world should be saved. Well, that's God's will. Remember, we're talking about God's will. God's will for you is healing. Amen. God's will for you is to be saved, to be in relationship with him. Right. Amen. But does God's will always come to pass? This isn't a trick question. Should we vote? Who says yes? <laughs> who's, who's it? No, seriously, serious question. Who thinks God's will always comes to pass? We've got a few takers in the balcony. All right. Who thinks no? Okay, now all the people that said yes feel bad. Don't feel bad. Okay, we're learning together. This is family. This is like we're healing school, friends. right? This is like healing school, okay? Here's the thing. God wants everyone in the world to come into knowledge of him. But there's a real place called hell. Yeah. Now, God hasn't designed it for people. But he says that he, he wishes that none should perish. None. None should perish. But we know that some will. Yeah. So God's will doesn't automatically come to pass. Otherwise, we would be robots. That's right. We, you know, we wouldn't be able to think for ourselves, make decisions for ourselves. Everything, you know, God's will would automatically just come to pass in our life and we would be like little robots. Right. We wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have a choice. There wouldn't be much of a relationship, right? If you just married a robot, there's not much relationship there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But God wanted to have relationship with us. He wanted to have intimacy with us. So he gave us free will. He gave us the ability to choose him or not to choose him, to receive his promises or not to receive his promises. And I love, Carly, when God says, I've set before you life and death. Mm -hmm. And then it's almost like he goes, here's a hint, choose life. Yeah. It's like a multiple choice quiz when all the answers are right. Let's see, here's sickness, here's wellness. Uh, choose See, so why, why would we believe that God wants us sick? Mm. I mean, when you start to think about how crazy this really is, people who have told us this for years will say things like this. Well, I just believe the Lord's using this sickness to teach me something. I, I believe that it's his will. Okay, then why are you going to a doctor to try to get well? Mm. Then you're resisting the will of God by going to a doctor to try to get well. Right. If you believe it's the will of God for you to be sick, then just be sick. Yeah, and fully embrace it. Right. Go all out. Right. right, go all out. I mean, you wouldn't want to go against the will of God. Right. By trying to get well. You know? <laughs> so you might as well just go all out with what Isaiah was saying in Isaiah 53 when he said, who will believe the report of the Lord? Yeah. God's saying, I'm just looking for those who will believe my promises, mm -hmm. believe what I've already said versus what well-meaning people or, or not so well-meaning people have said. Mm -hmm. Listen, the traditions of men will make void the power of God. That's true. When they're not lined up with scripture, we need to learn to say no to something that might appear good in order to say yes to the best. Amen. And what God has for us is in this life, not just when we get to heaven, Listen, in this life, as he is, so are we. When we get to heaven, yes. You know, we used to sing, when we all get to heaven, what a, you know, yes, it's true. It's I what didn't a, sing that because I wasn't old enough. <laughs> it's probably because you were from England. Five. And you went to one of those churches. <laughs> 
We always Carry used to. Carry on. We, well, you know, I, I grew up in the Baptist church, and we used to, as kids, we had these weird ideas about when we all get to heaven, what a day that's going to be. When the roll is called up yonder, I kept thinking, is it a Danish? Ham or cheese? What, what kind of role is they it going to be? They have great food in heaven. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Marriage, supper of the lamb. I'm just, you know. No, it's so weird how we get these strange ideas if we're not being taught the word of God yeah. as it truly is alive and powerful. Amen. See, and the traditions of men will make void the power of God. It's not that there's a lack of the power of God or that the word of God is not alive and powerful, that, that the Holy Ghost is somehow dimmed from what he used to be. Mm. No, the fact is Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's like God is just saying, who will believe my report? Right. What are you willing to believe for versus what people are telling you to believe? Why is it so much easier to believe what somebody else said instead of what God said? Right. And it's so true. You know, you're saying that the power of God is there. It's there. It's ready. It's on. It's always present. It's always it present. to heal. Yeah. There's, n there's not an off switch. Right. That's just what it is, right? The power of God is always there for us, always available. Remember, we're carrying around the power of God on the inside of us. Yeah. Right? I can walk over here and the power of God's going to go with me. Even right. on this side, the power of God is, this side, is the power of God over here? Let's just check in. Is it good? Is it good? You're good. What about in the middle section? Is it good? <laughs> Amen. Oh, they're really excited. What, what about over here? <laughs> Far in the back. What about up there? You good? Okay, good. Okay, so, here's the big one. What about on the internet? Ooh, uh, <laughs> can you shout louder, louder? We can't hear you. <laughs> oh, we hear you. We hear you. <laughs> here's the thing. The power of God is in us. It's in us. It's through us. It's always yes. It's always amen. It's always on. Amen? But if we want to tap into the power of God, faith is the, is the access code. Faith is how we access the promises of God that grace has provided. We have a part to play in, in seeing the power of God flow through us, touching our body and the people around us. Yeah. Amen. Well, you mentioned this in, in Matthew 1, 8, but freely you have received. How many people have freely received? Freely. Okay. So freely give. Yeah. That's it. If you've received, give it. If you received, give it. It's hard to give what you haven't received. Right? There's a, there's a process there. But faith is how we access what the promises of God have provided. But faith in itself is not passive. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's nothing weak. There's nothing timid. There's nothing intangible about faith. You can, it says many times in the scriptures that Jesus saw their faith. Mm -hmm. We can see faith in people. Right. We can see the effects of, of faith on people's lives in the words that they speak, in the actions that they take. It is tangible. It is real. It is a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. And we have the faith of Jesus on the inside of us. Hebrews um, 11 is a great definition that you can find in the Bible on faith. And it doesn't matter really what translation you read this in, it's going to start the same way, okay? So uh, I've got it here. It says, uh, now faith is, say now faith is. Now faith is. Okay. If you don't have that underlined in your Bible, get your marker out and just underline yep. it. Those three words, now faith is, okay? Is the substance of things hoped for. It has substance to it. It's yep. real. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. So it's substance. It is a substance of things we first hope for. If you didn't hope for a change in your life, you wouldn't have walked in the door. That's right. Right? That's a fact. If you didn't believe that God had something good for you or better for you than what you're experiencing today, you'd have never registered. You'd have never walked in the door. You wouldn't be where you are today. Amen. So some of you wouldn't even be alive today. Okay? There is, there is hope, but it gives birth to faith, and it says faith is the substance. It is the manifestation of the things you first hoped for. Yeah. See, hope doesn't disappoint. That's right. We need to have a godly hope. Yeah. The, the, a godly hope is linked to our imagination. Right. If you didn't imagine yourself in a place somewhere else than, than how you walked into th this room today, you wouldn't be here. You might have imagined yourself getting on an airplane. You might have imagined yourself driving in a car or however it was that you got here, traveling long distances, coming into the building. You might have imagined in, in yourself how you were going to receive your healing, yeah. what it was going to look like, what it was going to feel like. What, you might have imagined yourself giving a testimony. This is the power of the imagination that comes from hope. Well, faith 
is all of those things manifest. Yeah. It is the, sub, it is the substance, the point at which things you hope for mm -hmm. come into this physical world. Mm -hmm. Amen? And this is why we need to pay attention to it. It says it's the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Faith has evidence. Yeah, it does. How do you know when you're in faith? There's evidence, yeah. right? There's evidence associated with it. Mm -hmm. And so we, 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 we throw this phrase around, don't we? We're taking it by faith. Mm -hmm. All that means is we're taking something that we know to be true in a spiritual realm. Right. Okay, and it doesn't matter to us whether we've seen it in the physical realm or not yet. Because it happens first in, a, in, a, in the spiritual realm. So we're kind of seeing it inside out. We're seeing it inside out, exactly. But what faith does is it pulls things from a spiritual realm into a physical realm. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't really care what you see. Right. Right? Faith, faith doesn't care what it looks like. Faith doesn't care what it feels like. It's operating outside entirely of our five senses. And this is why we started out um, in the last session talking about how sometimes our previous negative experiences can um, filter how we interpret the Word of God. Right. Or we can let our experiences become of a higher value and importance than the Word of God in our life. Absolutely. But, you know, in Romans it says to be spiritually minded, Romans 8, 6, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Who wants to be people of life and peace? Amen. All right, being spiritually minded. To be carnally minded is death. Who wants death? Any takers? <laughs> it usually goes about that way. Yeah, yeah, it's never any takers for the death. I don't know. Yeah. But, but we need to be people that are faith minded, that are spiritually minded, because yeah. then we're going to walk in life and peace. That's right. So faith is powerful. And you can read in other translations, and it'll still say, now faith is. Yeah, now faith is. Mm -hmm. yep. And how faith and hope work together. You know, sometimes hope kind of gets a bad rap. You know, when we talk about faith and hope, it's like if you ask somebody, what do you believe is going to happen, you know, today? When I lay my hands on you, what do you believe is going to happen? Well, I, you know, I, I hope I'm going to get healed. Well, see, most people, when they're thinking of hope, they think it like, I, I hope that way. No, mm -hmm. biblical hope actually paints a picture on the inside of your heart. Mm -hmm. Faith is substance, amen, right. of what? Things hope for. Yep. So instead of seeing myself sick, oh, poor me, I'm just trying to get well, I hope so. No, what hope does is hope begins to change the picture to where you see yourself well and healed on the inside, resisting that sickness that's trying to come against you. Yep. Hope begins to paint a picture that says, I'm going to go with the report of the Lord, even though I'm not seeing it yet on the outside. Here's what hope is changing using my spiritual imagination. And by the way, let me just say this, that if you have not heard Andrew's teaching yet on spiritual imagination, it is absolutely powerful. And we would highly recommend that you get a hold of that. Because yeah. that's what really hope does. Mm -hmm. It begins to paint a picture on the inside that then faith can put action to. And Absolutely. once faith begins to put action to this, it takes it from just a belief to something that you're acting on. Yeah. See, I can believe I'm well and do nothing about it. Right. They, but then it's just like with salvation, there's got to be a response. You see, we receive, we receive healing or anything from God. Anything. Through the same mechanism that we receive salvation. It's not, right. a, it's not a different, you know, there's not like a different chant you have to do or a rain dance or you can take these magic herbs or something. Right? It's not about us. It's not about our works. It's not about what we're doing. But there is a response. Faith in, in a believer is, is far from lazy. It's far from passive. In fact, it goes after it. Yeah. It goes after what it knows already belongs to it. Yeah, same That's man. why it doesn't say, well, next week, bless God, faith may be, right. if it be thy will. But right? see, you just said now mm -hmm. faith is. So the word now, it what, is means it, what does it mean? Now. Now. Now faith is. I believe that there are people in here that are receiving their healing now. Now. Amen. Now. Now. Amen. Some of you need to get this on the inside of you. Now. 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 Now Amen. faith is. I'm receiving it now. now. Right? Not next week. Not next year. Not, I don't care if you've had 100 people pray for you. We have never been in a meeting like this before. Now, now. faith. Yeah. Amen. There is a boldness in that that says the devil's been stealing from me. Yeah. He's been stealing from me far too long. I'm taking back what the devil stole. Man, I'm yeah. getting stirred up here. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, seriously, because sickness and disease make me furious. Yeah, me too. Okay, because you know what it is? It's a symptom of the devil stealing from you what right. is rightfully yours. Yeah. God has promised you healing and the devil has been robbing you of it. 
And the moment we stand up and we say, now faith is, now in this moment, I'm taking back what is rightfully mine. I'm not gonna sit here and think about how sorry I am and how poorly I feel and how bad life's treated me. I'm just gonna start today taking back what the devil stole from me. I'm gonna start taking back the land, the healing, the finances, the relationships, the energy, the youth that has been taken from me. Everything the devil's stolen is coming back. Hallelujah. Every single thing. Amen. Amen. This is what now faith does. Yeah. You can see it has an attitude. It does. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it has an attitude. Right? It has an attitude. And you can see in the Amplified, I like how it says in the Amplified, it says now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed. How many of you own a vehicle or a house that has a title deed to it? Right? You have, a, you have something with a title deed, right? That's your proof of ownership. Yeah, yep. if you need to go and get a license plate or whatever, you take that title deed down to the DMV or wherever the, the office is where you're from and you say, look, I'm, I'm the rightful owner, here's my proof. Yep. And they'll give you what you're asking for. This is what faith does. It says it is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things that we first hoped for. Yep. It, it is the proof of the things that we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real, and this is the kicker, fact that is not revealed to the senses. Daniel started out um, this morning talking about the difference between fact and truth, okay? Now you may have a a negative doctor's report, fact. Those are facts. But it's not the truth. Okay, so let me ask you this, with that idea, Mm -hmm. do we have to deny the facts in order to be in faith? I don't think, faith is not denial. Faith is denying the facts to trump the truth. Okay? Now, if you don't want to get a doctor's report, then don't go to the doctor. Right. Okay? But there's no point getting the doctor's report and saying, well, I just don't believe that. I just don't, I just don't believe it. Well, it's, you wanted the x-ray. You had the x-ray. Your leg is broken. That is a fact. That's a fact. Okay? We're not in denial pretending it never happened. Faith right. is not denial. Okay? That's a river in Egypt. That's a river in Egypt. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> denial. But we, what, okay, we, what just, we're saying here... Yeah. <laughs> These Sorry. Are, these are the dad jokes. Let it go. Let it go. Mm. No, don't start singing. No. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But what we are saying is we are, we are going to not let that report move us from our position of faith that says, my leg may be broken right now, but now faith is. And I'm going to speak words to this bone, and it's going to mend together. Yep. Amen. So what we're doing is we, we, we're receiving information in the, in the carnal realm, in our five senses. Yeah. But remember, faith doesn't operate in the five senses. It says here, it's, it's the um, faith is perceiving as real, fact that is not revealed to the senses. It has a different report. Isaiah said in, in Isaiah 53, who will believe my report? Yeah. We have an opportunity to believe a report. Which report are we going to believe? The report of the Lord or the report of the doctor? Man, that was awesome. I tell you, I love Daniel and Carly. They have, they have trained, I don't even know, but thousands and thousands of people have been through our healing school. They're now out ministering healing. And this exact teaching that you heard today, you can get either on this USB that will have uh, audio and video on it, or you can get just the videos, or you can get just the CDs. Listen to our announcer as he gives you this information and please call and receive these materials today. On today's broadcast, Andrew shared a portion of the 2019 Healing is Here conference. Once again, let me encourage you to please get this product. As I've said many times this week, God healed thousands of people at our 2019 Healing is Here conference and we've captured every bit of this. And we've heard many testimonies of people since then that have watched the archive, um, you know, services, and they get healed. There is no expiration date on the anointing of God. This would bless you. So we've got a USB that has all of the audio and video. We've got it just in DVD. We've got it in CD. If you'll listen, our announcer will give you all the information. And please take advantage of this. God wants you well. The 2019 Healing is Here conference is available in its entirety on a CD or DVD album or on a USB flash drive, which includes both audio and video. These valuable resources were recorded live from the conference and are each available when you contact us. 
go to awmc.ca to see all the ways you can get this product. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada Helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. You know, I believe that my living commentary is probably the greatest contribution I have for the body of Christ. It's a digital commentary where I've written footnotes on nearly 27,000 verses out of the 31,000 verses in the Bible. And it's a living commentary because I'm still writing it and it gets updated. So check it out as a Christmas gift for someone. Our living commentary, go to awmi.net and check it out today. Now through December 31st, you can get Andrew's Living Commentary for 25% off. This Living Commentary is packed with Andrew's footnotes on over 26,000 verses. Don't delay and receive a five booklet bonus bundle. Surprise your loved ones with the enduring joy of the word by going to awmc.ca to get the Living Commentary today. Don't delay, the offer ends December 31st. let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto, and we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways, but we want to help you, and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Caris Bible College, Toronto. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a Grace Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Go to awmc.ca or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220. Also, to learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. Remember, that's awmc.ca. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today.